This is what I love the most about America. The open road, wide open spaces, and wacky roadside attractions. Welcome to South Dakota on this episode of Random Land. Well, I've been working my way back home the last couple of days across north, and now south Dakota with endless miles of prairie grass and fields. I've seen a lot of windswept grassy terrain, but one thing I haven't seen are prairie dogs, at least until now. Look at these little guys. They're so cute. About 95% of their habitat has now been destroyed, but prairie dogs used to range all over North America in the hundreds of millions. But now, catching a glimpse of these little ground squirrel-like dogs is proving more and more rare and elusive, unless, of course, you're in Cactus Flat, South Dakota, visiting the ranch store and prairie dog town, where not only can you catch a glimpse of these tiny little animals who who, by the way, scientists say, speak a language so complex they can say, not only is a person walking towards you, but a person in a blue shirt is walking towards you. Smart little buggers, huh? But you can get a glimpse of their enormous cousin. Would you look at the size of that prairie dog? That's a big dog. This enormous plant-eating rodent is 12 feet tall. Not counting the base he's sitting on and is made of six tons of concrete. He's been the mascot of this tour stop and a prairie dog town called the Ranch Store for more than 60 years, having come into being in 1959. Sculpted by a guy named Harold Zundell. But interestingly, even though he was created to promote the Ranch Store and to lure visitors off the highway to buy some prairie dog food, this is not the giant prairie dog nor the Ranch Store's original location. They were moved here in 1972, which is why you can see his concrete base is kind of funky and and strange when the ranch store was relocated from a town a little ways east called Kadoka, South Dakota, once the modern interstate came through and took all of its traffic away. So, of course, the ranch store packed up their giant steer and their giant prairie dog and moved over here, still a half mile or so off the interstate, but along one of the main little roads leading to the entrance of Badlands National Park down there. It's got sort of the same shape and layout as the original, so if you didn't know the story, you would never know it was moved here from another location entirely and rebuilt. Like I said, though, keeping their giant 1950s steer sign. And of course, their big daddy of all the prairie dogs. Now, some people say this is the largest prairie dog on earth, the world's largest prairie dog. But there was another giant concrete prairie dog at an attraction called Prairie Dog Town in Oakley, Kansas that I visited long in the past, which I believe is actually been closed for a number of years. And they had always claimed without dispute that they had the largest prairie dog on earth. But since Prairie Dog Town in Oakley, Kansas has been closed for years and the fate of its giant prairie dog is unknown, at least to me. We'll just go ahead and say this is the world's largest prairie dog that you can visit. It's open to the public. Unless you know of a bigger one and then I'm all ears. Look at these little guys. They are so docile and friendly out here. Normally when I run across prairie dogs, it'll be out in some field, they'll be completely wild. And as soon as you get anywhere near this close, they will dart underground into the huge interconnected underground cities they live in, in big groups called coteries, I'm pretty sure. But here at the ranch store, you can get ridiculously close. And although they're aware of you, they're keeping an eye on you. They're pretty much unbothered by humans being so nearby because the humans who come here, instead of treating them as a nuisance, are more likely to feed them unsalted peanuts, which at the ranch store is prairie dog food. Considering that their numbers have dwindled by 95%, like I said, due to habitat loss and human beings misunderstanding prairie dogs, and considering that other threatened species depend on their survival, I guess we can let the question of whether we should be feeding the prairie dogs slide and just enjoy it for what it is. All right, I'm gonna head inside the ranch store now and contribute to the 50 years of feeding this coterie by grabbing my own bag of prairie dog food. I've never seen so much prairie dog merchandise. I've certainly never seen any glow-in-the-dark prairie dog t-shirts before. And mix it with the prairie dog merch, you got a lot of your western souvenir stuff. But as you'll find out, we're gonna have plenty of opportunity for souvenirs later. All right, I got my couple of $1 bags of prairie dog food. And now all that's left is to make friends with a dog. All right, here's a couple of dogs. What's weird is they're sort of less interested in the peanuts 
than you would think when you throw them. I mean, I guess they're pretty used to getting peanuts. Maybe they're sick of peanuts and they want to change. Or maybe we just need to walk a little farther away from the parking lot. Hey, fellas, are you hungry? You want those peanuts? He does not want the peanuts. How about you, though? Do you want one of those peanuts? They're delicious. Nope. I guess not. Look at this. They're more interested in grooming each other and eating some of the green plants growing up here in between their holes. Please eat the peanuts. They're showing interest in the peanut. Oh, oh, oh. Wait a minute. This one's going for a peanut. You're the man now, prairie dog. What? This is my new favorite prairie dog, man. He knows a good thing when he sees one. Actually, I gotta stop saying he because most prairie dogs in a coterie are females. They'll have a couple of breeding males, but for the most part, they're all girls. And I think while the males will run from sort of tribe to tribe, as it were, the female prairie dogs will all stay linked for life in one group. Pretty cool. Oh, oh, now this one's getting jealous, eh? Huh? Shouldn't have ran away earlier. Look at how loving they are to each other. It's so cool they have a complex language. They literally talk to each other. They live in a little group, grooming each other and linked for life. And theoretically, anyways, they love peanuts. All right. These greasy little gophers are ignoring my peanuts. Wait a minute. One of them's got one. Yes. Enjoy a tasty peanut. Yeah. Oh, and this one picked one up too, huh? You munching and crunching, you little bugger? Yeah. That's what I thought. Those peanuts are delicious, aren't they? Yeah. I totally get why farmers wouldn't be fans of these things, building big old prairie dog towns in the middle of their fields, especially after you step in a couple of holes and twist your ankle a few times. But they're so stinking cute. You can see why I had to stop here first today. Let me tell you what, no doubt you gotta be pretty hardy to survive a North or South Dakota winter. But you gotta be pretty hardy to survive a North or South Dakota summer too. Cause even in this mild weather, the sun really beats down on you. In the last couple of days, I've been out in ghost towns and on the insane enchanted highway out in the sun all day long and it's starting to wear on me a little bit. My whole plan for today was I'm gonna spend all day looking at things that are indoors, but when lured by prairie dogs, how could I resist coming down the road towards Badlands National Park? Dude, it's pretty wild. Some of them will come right up to you. They know what you've got. They know what they want. I'm telling you, it's a pretty unique experience because usually by the time you've spotted one and get anywhere near they're popping down in the holes and re-popping up yards and yards away i give the ranch store a 10 out of 10 a great place to see prairie dogs up close the main attraction getting the food only costs you one dollar it's right off the interstate there's souvenirs there's drinks there's ice and a giant concrete prairie dog this is what i love the most about america all right i think it's about time we started heading down that highway today i'm traveling from one episode roadside attraction to another but as I've never been here before and who knows when I may pass this way again I'm heading down the road in to Badlands National Park just to at least take a peek you know see what's going on wow you don't have to go inside very far at all before you get to an absolutely gorgeous and I mean stunning overlook look at this there are miles and miles of this beautiful just insane Scenery. This was sacred territory for the Sioux. And after the famous ghost dance had reached here into the Badlands, the U.S. broke the treaty, took the land, and in the 1930s turned it into this national monument, which eventually, of course, became Badlands National Park. Interestingly, in the 1980s, the United States tried to pay the Sioux for the loss of their land, and the Sioux wouldn't take the money on principle. Pretty neat, just this first overlook, just a few seconds into the park. I thought we wouldn't see anything at all. I think I might drive to the visitor center at least though, because can you really say you've been to a national park unless you at least see the visitor center? I'm not sure. What do you think? What does it take to have quote unquote seen it? Just to enter it and touch it with your foot? To see the main attraction? To see the visitor center? I was not expecting to come here at all today. But I must admit, the scenery is pulling me in. Signs everywhere in this park warning you about rattlesnakes. And listen, I love to see wildlife. But I'll tell you what, I'd be perfectly happy never seeing a wild rattlesnake again for the rest of my life. Let them bother Eve, Lord. I don't need them. I am sure there are fascinating geological reasons why this mud became sort of rock-ish, but I was far more interested when I saw a sign saying there was an animal living back here in the prehistory days called an Oreodont, like a weird, freaky, striped pig dog. Man, this park is neat. The roads are very good, but I must say the lands 
are pretty bad. They ain't no good for farming know-how. You know, we got a lot of similar terrain out in California, Arizona, New Mexico, where I've spent so much of my life. So it's not just sort of the surroundings and the sci-fi nature of this that's making an impression on me as much as thinking about all oh, that flat prairie that you have to travel through and then to suddenly come across this no wonder the native americans and of course now the national park system and visitors from all over the world consider this such a special place anyone else find it weird that you can't use drones in any national park but they're allowed to do helicopter tours over it helicopters a little bit louder than a drone drones are annoying don't get me wrong but helicopters 10 times as annoying. All right, I checked out the visitor center, absorbed a little nature, and now it's time to be moving along for something a little more man-made. All right, if you haven't guessed by the part of the country that we're in, maybe these billboards will give you a clue as to our next destination, a place for weary travelers. And after days and days on the sunny prairie, I'm getting awfully weary. Welcome to the little town of Wall, South Dakota, which of course is home to the most famous pharmacy on the planet. We'll get to that in a second, but first, would you look at the size of this Dinosaur! This giant brontosaurus, built back when there was such a thing as a brontosaurus, in our old school textbooks, is 80 feet tall! And it's absolutely towering over the interstate highway down there in this smoky, weird, hazy light today, beckoning visitors westward towards the Black Hills, and more importantly, towards the exit right behind them that leads to the world famous Wall Drug. Dude, holy guacamole, would you look at the size of that billboard? That thing's so big. It makes the dinosaur look small. Now they constructed this dinosaur here in Wall when Interstate 90 was built because they didn't want to lose the traffic on the little highways as it was being bypassed. So they hired Emmett Sullivan, the guy who had built the dinosaur park in Rapid City that we looked at last year with all those kooky dinosaurs in it, to come and construct something that was guaranteed to get highway travelers' attention, including with its light up light bulb eyes, changing the landscape of Interstate 90 forever and making a pretty shizable addition to America's roadside oddities. Man, this thing is glorious. I can't overstate just how big it is. But you know what? This dinosaur wasn't built just to bring us over off the side of the highway and look at it. This thing was constructed to pull us into the little town of Wall back there, and that's where we're heading next, just like millions of other people over the last eight or nine decades. In 1931, a newly minted pharmacist by the name of Ted Houston with his wife Dorothy moved out here to the little tiny town of Wall out on the prairies when they discovered that there was a little patent medicine store for sale out here, which basically means a drugstore without a pharmacist on on hand, giving themselves five years to make a go for it in Wall. Things did not really pick up. It was very quiet and sleepy here until one day Dorothy went home to go take a nap up by the highway and the sound of all the jalopies cruising by a few blocks away on US 14 at the head of the town stopped her from getting any rest. All she could think about is how many people were flying by and that's when she got an idea. You know what all those travelers would like in this hot weather? some ice water. Everybody gets thirsty. And so she's the one who came up with the plan to give travelers free ice water if they stopped into their drugstore. And even more importantly, putting up the first sign out on the highway that read, get a soda, get a beer, turn next corner, just as near to highway 16 and 14, free ice water, wall drug. Not the catchiest slogan I've ever heard in the world, but apparently it worked because visitors started pulling into wall drug in droves and things only got busier and busier when the nearby Mount Rushmore was completed, not to mention Badlands becoming a national park. And so that original tiny drug store grew into what today is more than a 76,000 square foot behemoth of a roadside attraction that draws visitors from around the world and has become bar none the most famous drug drugstore on earth. Dude, look at the size of this place. It takes up almost an entire city block. And it's incredible to think it's been owned by the same family and in continuous operation since 1931. The building is so long, you actually can't back up far enough to get a picture 
of the whole thing, even with a wide-angle lens. Incredible to think that a small mom-and-pop drugstore, soda fountain, ice cream parlor, eventually cafe, etc., could become this. And if you think the outside's impressive, wait till we get in there. Question is, which entrance do we use? There are so many. Believe it or not, there is still a pharmacy counter in Waldrug. It's an active pharmacy for the town, complete with all the medicine you could get at CVS or someplace like that, where they still give away a free bumper sticker to each family. Only now, branching off in every direction imaginable is room after room of attractions. Look at this, the Western Art Gallery Cafe. Waldrug is home to one of the largest private Western art collections in the world. And everywhere you look, you're gonna see kitschy stuff like this cowboy here, representing nearly a century of the Houston family, adding on to this most popular of roadside stops. Look at the ice cream parlor, soda fountain, and the giant lunch counter cafe, and it's layered with all these hand-painted signs that are who knows how many decades old. So many artifacts just in this cafe alone. Much less the dining rooms and seating areas, which are filled with a vast collection of Western art, including all these bronzes here. I don't even know where to look. There's a whole donut counter, a huge menu to choose from. Dude, and look at this. Yes, in the rear dining room. Look at the hand-carved holes holding up the roof. They are just a nod to Western history, these Native American figures. They are Western history, and there's all kinds of information about each one of them. I was going to say it would take you a year to see everything in Waldrug, just in the areas we've been in so far, which is a tiny portion. But I think it'd be more accurate to say it would take a lifetime. Look at Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid over here in this dining room. And by the way, they still serve up free ice water to every traveler visiting Waldrug, including us. We're now joining communion with a long line of thirsty travelers before us. I see. And they also still serve up five cent coffee at Waldrug. Something they've done since the very earliest days. Okay, this has all just been the cafe gang. In the front corner of which, through a little side entrance, is a little souvenir and convenience store that also includes another donut counter, because one of the things they've done at Waldrug for years is offer not just military veterans, but also honeymooners a free coffee and donut. Those Houston sure knew what they were doing. Okay. We've seen just a fraction of the building and it's obvious we're gonna need help. Look at the map of this place. It's so crazy and all we've seen so far is this little section here. There's so much more to see. Whew, it's like preparing for deep sea diving. Okay. Let's head back in. Time to head through the most impressive entrance of all and look at this. This is incredible. The signs everywhere. The concrete sculptures. Fancier smoke, mister? No thanks, I'm trying to cut back. The freaky mannequins everywhere. A wood carved Wyatt Herb coin op machines on every side of you. Wood carved Annie Oakley and Buffalo Bill. And even this very sultry prairie gal. Hello. Fancy meeting you here, ma'am. Oof, look across the hallway. Annie Oakley does not look amused. I don't see why she's so popular. She can't even shoot a gun. Oh, honey, I can do a lot of things. Dude, there's a leather goods store, a boots and moccasins store, each one of which is fully, fully stocked. A full on Western wear clothing emporium that goes back and back and stocks literally thousands and thousands of Western hats, thousands and thousands of cowboy boots, more than you could ever try on in a lifetime, jeans and Dusters. It's insane. And then across the hallway is a massive bookstore filled up mainly with Western books, but there's really books of all kinds back here. Cookbooks and books about tractors and lots and lots of history. Even coloring books for fake Tyler. Dude, I need a bookstore like this at home. Dude, this is nuts. And the nuttiest part of it is everything we've looked at so far is just in the first half of this hallway here. There is a whole whole lot more back here in the back, including a huge homage to the original wall drug building in here. Look at this. It's part old-timey apothecary museum, complete with an old 1939 Coke bottle in there, an ancient wall drug advertisement, 1933 wall drug prescriptions that were filled over here, and look at all of this stuff. So it's part museum and part actual pharmacy. Look at this. 
You can get drugs in here. There's a whole lot of family history in here. Everybody from the original pharmacist Ted and his wife Dorothy who came up with the free ice water to their son who was a pharmacist and even going back before all of them to the old doctor. Who would have thought such a medical family would end up owning the biggest, most famous roadside attraction in the whole west. Now if we're talking about family history, there is a little alley back here covered in pictures of the whole family. All of the grandparents and great-grandparents and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Sons and daughters and old family friends. Wow, it would be incredible to be a member of the family and come down this hallway. My grandma had a hallway pretty similar to this. Pictures of everyone all over, but not quite this long. And it didn't get this many visitors. Across the street from this alley, look at this. The Houston family were devout Catholics. That's part of what drew them to Wall. It had a Catholic church here. And so the family actually built this Traveler's Chapel in Waldrug. And the whole time I've been here, I've been seeing people coming in and out to pray, which is pretty neat when you think about it. And in the back, there's a charity donation box. And outside, this guy conjuring back the buffalo. So everybody's praying. There's so many little details here that I'm having to pass over. There's a lot going on. We passed right by the camping store in this hallway. And they've got the famous Rock Hound shop, which everybody agrees totally rocks. Wait, yeah. I forgot to put in the Crystals. Ooh, geodes. Whoa, sage. Mystical. And outside the Rock Hound shop, you have more great characters from Western history. In fact, this is called Cowboy Alley, a full on side street over here. With photographs of wall drug signs and advertisements located all around the world. I told you guys, it's the most famous drugstore on the planet. Look at all these little things hidden up here. Each one of these things would normally grab me and get me excited. Just the way each shop is decorated and themed. There are full on totem poles and deer heads and saddles. An old school pappy machine. Oh, Farther back past the Traveler's Chapel, you got a Western art gallery and print and poster shop. They're combined inside, but they're full of Western art. You can actually buy everything from buffalo skulls to steak brands to fine art prints and original paintings. Some of them themed around wall drug itself and then there are posters everywhere yeah, this kind of stuff if you're into that coca pellies cowboy pillows indian blankets native american pottery carved wood nativity sets from the holy land even some hand carved wood over here they've got every kind of art wow even a hand painted table drum look at this place it gets flooded with people and it's no wonder there's even more stuff back here i mean who wouldn't want to stop in at the giant fudge shop featuring more fudge and candy than you could ever pack in your car. Not to mention the pucker up stuff over here. So many little treats behind the counter. All of that and more is over there in that country store and then further back. Finally, all the way back at the end, you got Zoltar. You got a wild bill. Carved wooden Billy the Kid. This hand carved wooden cowboy waiting in front of the ladies' restroom. Guess he's waiting on his girlfriend. A whole hallway of tourist pamphlets and information. A photo booth, more coin op machines, and poker. Alice with her gentleman callers over there just waiting for the game to start. All of this was just in one long hallway. However, it is the majority of the stores, so we've seen quite a bit of it now, but not all of it. Because wedged between all of this and the cafe we saw earlier is every kid's favorite section, the toy shop. And look at the size of the selection in here. Every kind of roadside toy you could ever hope to find, including a lot, and I mean a lot, of toy guns. Just what you need in the old west. Everything from your classic rubber snake to your buffalo to your buffalo coin bank. Got your wilderness collection here. An old ram. And even some of these. Sup, dog. Sup. Oh, look at some of the classics. The old whoopee cushion, the hand buzzer, the goofy teeth. Look at the rubber chickens. Squirt lighter, fake parking tickets, snap gum, magic tricks, fart whistle. Ew. All of this is wonderful, but the coolest features of the toy shop are what's in the back. Some animatronic attractions of wall drug. Starting with Dr. Feel good. Who's hawking his amazing wall drug tonic over here? And don't forget, it'll cure what ails you. Let's see what Dr. Feel has got to say over here in front of the men's restroom. Plenty of room for everyone to see what will soon be <laughs> the worldwide replacement for the medicine tent. That's right, it's called wall drug snake oil cologne. 
There's darn near four fluid ounces here with a special concoction of snake oil, herbs, and cactus juice distillates that are sure to change your life. As a matter of fact, it'll even make it longer because this special sauce is a patented restorer of youth. Yup, say goodbye to arthritis and wrinkles forever. Feel like a kid again and all for just pennies on the dollar. Now, who wants a bottle? Or two? Or maybe three? <laughs> Not gonna lie, I kinda do now. That was incredible, but perhaps even more incredible is behind Dr. Feelgood, this animatronic band built for wall drug back in 1957 by a fella named Hugh Hockaday. He was friends with the Houstons, and they've been out here singing Home on the Range for decade after decade after decade with their animal pals and visitors from all over the globe. In Insane. Beyond the toy store section over here, there's also the whole central souvenir shop with everything from bracelets to mugs with your name on it, pressed pennies, head mounted authentic jackalopes made in South Dakota, shot glasses, keychains, postcard, souvenir license plates, little itty bitty Mount Rushmore's, corn, potholders, cookbooks, earrings, jewelry, world's greatest grandpa signs, corn, this type of stuff that always makes me want to purchase it so I can give it to. Allie for Christmas. She loves this stuff. I mean, who doesn't love a dragon? Dragons are sexy. <laughs> what was I talking about? Oh yeah, there's blankets out here. Silly hats, magnets, corn, hats, t-shirts, ponchos, coasters, playing cards, live, laugh, love type signs, drinking bears, Christmas ornaments, picture frames and photo albums, bigger Mount Rushmore, snow globes, flocked banks, fly swatters, corn, lots and lots of these Things, hats, you get the idea. I can't keep talking in this voice. But best of all, something most decidedly not for sale. Something that's bringing people from all over the shop. Ted Houston's Cowboy Orchestra. This animatronic cowboy band plays every 15 minutes for travelers from all over the world. I actually don't know offhand how old this cowboy orchestra is, but you can tell just by looking at it, it's been here for a while. And look at these kooky old characters. I wish I had the skill to build something like this. I love each one of these crazy animatronic characters. The way they move, the crazy facial expressions, the old school country songs, the jerky motions, and look at this. The big old rattlesnakes in cowboy hats. That's incredible. Every 15 minutes, they play two songs. You gotta wait in here for a while, hover around. Because you gotta know where to strike. All right, we've now seen most of the inside of Wall Drug, or as much as we can in a hurry like this. There are, of course, more little <laughs> shops in here, like the giant T-shirt store wedged in between the old pharmacy and the toy shop over here. And there's a lot more merchandise on offer than I could ever show you. But even though we've seen most of the front of Wall Drug, that's not all there is. Because it turns out that Wall Drug has a backyard, and some of its most famous attractions are out there across the alley. And all whole other separate building. Oh my gosh, look at this. You can get free ice water here in the backyard. They've got more coin-operated animatronic shows. And this is the best. Some of their historic roadside attractions. Look at this big old jackrabbit out here. I love seeing old school things like this that your great grandparents could have taken pictures with. And look at his freaking cousin. Would you look at the size of that? Jackalope, dear. That is one big antlered jackrabbit, that's for sure. I love that. There's a similar sized jackrabbit, just a jackrabbit, down at the Jackrabbit Trading Post on Route 66. And you know what else I love? They're half in shadow right now, which is unfortunate. But Waldrug has something very rare indeed. A couple of stuffed buffalo you can actually touch. Let me tell you, that's rare. I mean, stuffed buffalo, especially their heads, are all over the West, but you're never allowed to touch them. They're both way less and way more soft than you'd ever Ever expect. Okay, quickly, in the backyard over here is a miniature train depot water play feature, a miniature Mount Rushmore, a couple other fun pick opportunities, and a bunch of other stuff, including a giant US map in here I can't show you through the glare. But I think the most famous thing, or the most famous modern part of wall drugs is in here. Did I say wall drugs? All right, inside this back building are hundreds of historical photos, fun pick cutouts, an epic old prospector and mule, even more Merchandise stores, which are closed at the moment, thankfully. I think we've seen enough merchandise for one day. There's Gumbo Lil over here. A giant stuffed grizzly bear. Some chainsaw car bears. An alligator. A big stuffed 
Rabbit-donkey hybrid? And even more colorful characters are from the West. Just too many to name. Look at these guys playing poker in the window of this closed dining room. I could also see another musician way back there. There's a whole giant video game arcade, which at the moment is thankfully closed. Oh, or maybe unthankfully, they got Star Wars Battle Pod. But most famous of all, beyond all of this stuff, is the main attraction, the main feature you always see him on TV. The giant animatronic T-Rex. Would you look at the size of that dinosaur? He looks cool. He looks peaceful. But don't let your guard down, because every 12 minutes, he feasts. I don't trust you, Rex. Look at this while we're waiting for the feasting to begin. Look at this other hallway of wall drug history. These are all celebrities who have visited wall drug. There are articles and letters from presidents and awards. Hey, look at that, it's Ronald Reagan. And way, way at the back, there's Dorothy Houston and Ted Houston. Remember, Ted may have got her going, but this was all Dorothy's idea. They had a good run, these two. Yes! The T-Rex is awakened! Finally! Oh my gosh! That's scary! He's angry! Ah! It's much more frightening than you'd expect it to be. Oh my gosh, that was one grumpy dinosaur! She doesn't move around that much, but he is much louder than I expected. Oh, tell Lolly! Okay, gang. Peace has been restored in the Old West. There is more stuff in Wall Drug than I could ever hope to show you in one adventure. Although I gave it my best shot, I must say. There's just way too much here. I haven't even dived into all the historical artifacts and photos that cover the massive walls, pun intended, of this place. I didn't have time to show you the monkey show or explain that this is built over the original ice water well for wall drug. Matter of fact, I'm not even going to enter back into the main wall drug building right now because I'll be too tempted to try to show you even more Stuff. Not only have we run out of time for me to show you more wall drug features, like the windows out front, for example, we also ran out of time for all the other stuff in wall. And there are a bunch of souvenir stores down on this little main street, and there are a ton of chainsaw carvings in town, to say nothing of the 40-foot jackalope. Stop. Just stop. We have to stop right there. We have seen and done a lot today. Wall Drug is one of the most famous roadside attractions in America. It turns out for very good reason. And I hope that one day we can return and plunge into even more of its secrets. But for now, we've got to be content with what we got. Get what you get and you don't throw a fit. Do me a favor, my friends. Go down into the links below. Check out those links. We've got sick 10-year anniversary merchandise. We've got the Patreon you can join with all kinds of stuff. If you want to become a member, if you enjoy this episode, and you want to keep the show on the road, check all that out at randomland.com. Real easy. I travel thousands and thousands of miles to do this family-friendly, edutainment-style show, which isn't always easy in today's market. Yikes. But I appreciate every single one of you watching this. I appreciate every single one of you that shares this with a friend you think would like it. But now that I've said all that and you have joined me to see all this, we've done our duty. It's time to go home and sleep wall. are falling down. Maybe default. Maybe, 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 maybe.